Grace is God's unmerited favor for us. It's his amazing love. And the truth is, many times we struggle to, to understand it. If you find yourself struggling to understand God's grace, don't beat yourself up. Even the disciples had trouble understanding God's grace. Jesus, Jesus, you're alive. I can't believe you're alive. This is so great. I was in the boat, and I wasn't catching any fish. And I've been there all night, no fish coming in the net. And then all of a sudden, I hear this voice from the shore saying, cast your net on the other side. And I'm thinking, look, I'm a fisherman. I know what I'm doing, right? But I'm not catching any fish. So I throw that net on the other side, and then a gaggle of fish jump in the net. And I'm thinking, okay, this is a miracle. This is a total miracle. Who in the world could have told me to throw the nail on the other side? And then boom, I look over there and there is you. You're on the seashore saying, it is I, the Lord, it is I, the Lord. This is great. I can't believe you're alive. This is so awesome. Andrew, come on, get out of the boat. Let's go. Peter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you love me? Yes, I love you. I love you. And this is so great. You're alive. Feed believe. my sheep. Andrew, let's go. I said it's Jesus. Get out of the boat, man. Let's go. Peter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you love me? I love you, yes, and I'm so sorry about that whole rooster clucking thing. I had no idea what you meant then, but I do now, and I'm better for it, all right? It's good, but feed my sheep. Andrew, I'm smiling, but I'm serious. Let's go. Get out of the boat. Peter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you love me? Jesus, mere, mere words cannot express the passion and the love that I have for you. With everything that I am, with everything that I have, I love you. I love you. You know everything. I love you. That's good. Then feed my sheep. I didn't even know you had livestock. That is so like you. There's something new about you all the time. That's what I love about you. Peter, do you remember the morning that the ladies went to the tomb? Yeah, 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 yeah. We were all in the upper room, and we're trying to figure out what to do because we thought you were dead. Well... You were dead. And we're all in there thinking what to do, trying to figure out. And all of a sudden, Mary comes running from a long ways away. And she's screaming, beehive, beehive, beehive. And I'm thinking, I'm allergic to bees. You know, keep the bees out. But as she got closer, I heard her correctly. She said, he's alive, he's alive, he's alive. I said, who's alive, who's alive? And then she said, she was at the tomb. The tomb was empty. And inside the tomb, there was an angel. And the angel said, go tell the disciples and Peter that everything is okay. He is risen. He is alive. So me and John, we hightailed it down there. And if John says he beat me, I beat him, all right? FYI, he's totally lying. But we get down there, and I look in the tomb, and, and it is. It's empty. There's not a thing in the tomb. And I'm sitting there looking inside the tomb thinking, man, what does this mean? What does this mean? And John is right there. John is so good with words. He should write a book. He is so good with words. And John said, don't you get it, Peter? This is everything that Jesus said he was going to do. And you did it. You're alive. This is so great. This is amazing. Peter, the angel said what? Angel said, go to the disciples and Peter. Everything is okay. He is risen. As you said, you're here. You're alive. He said what? Go to the disciples and Peter. Go tell the disciples and Peter. You said my name. Why didn't you say my name? That's grace, Peter. No, no, because I don't deserve that. Because that night, people kept coming up to me and they, they kept asking me, and I kept denying you time and time again. They asked, asked, asked if I belong to you, and I said, No, I don't belong to you. It'll take my whole life to make up for what I did. It's unforgivable what I did. No. No, Peter, see, what I did on the cross was to take what was unforgivable and make it forgivable. That's my grace. It's not about you. It's always about me. That's grace, Peter. But you know what? A lot of us are we're just like Peter. We live our lives and we make mistakes. And when we make mistakes, we feel like God can never use us. I've done too much. I've gone too far. There's no way I could ever, ever earn the forgiveness of God. But see, we got it all backwards when we go that route. 
We, we've got it all mixed up because we've now put the emphasis on us instead of the emphasis on God. When are you going to finally stop compromising your destiny because of your history? When are you finally going to let go and let God forgive and cleanse whatever's happened? Maybe it's something you've done. Hey, maybe it's something that happened to you. It was out of your hands. You never asked for that situation. You never asked for that circumstance, but it happened anyways. And now there's no way in the world God could ever use me. If I had to take and write my testimony on a piece of, pay, on a piece of cardboard, it'd have to be that. It's a pretty bad day in my history. Deny Christ three times. But oh, because of that day on that seashore, because of that day that God extended his grace and offered it so freely to me, See, my testimony didn't end right there. I had another side to it. And even though I had denied Christ, he used me. Not because of me, all because of him. You see, heroes are not perfect. But heroes are redeemed. <laughs>